This is the Drill Spiral Canister Damascus Knife I made a few months ago here on the channel. I'm going to try again with a few new techniques to see if we can get an even more interesting result. Per usual, it's not all smooth sailing, but maybe we can learn something from my mistakes here. Now if you watched the first drill shaving video, you remember this. I tried to lay out the spirals lengthwise in this canoe style canister so that they ran down the entire length of the blade. But despite my efforts, not really enough of them were visible in the final knife here. So we ended up using a different method. We ended up just cramming them into the canister in, in a vertical manner. And the resulting knife was interesting. You saw it at the open of this video, but it wasn't what I intended. So here's our first change up. This time we're going to make our drill shavings out of 15 and 20 steel. The added nickel content in this metal really stands out brightly when etching is performed which was sort of another area that needed improvement in the first version. I didn't probably do enough etching and there wasn't a high degree of contrast. So what etches even brighter than 15 in 20? Well, you can see here this pure uh, nickel sheet that I've drilled. So here's some of the different drill spirals we've gotten. Uh, it's pretty cool. The, the size of the drill bit isn't all that important. It's sort of how sharp it is and how much pressure is applied. So we're gonna use both of these metals this time around and see if we can get three different levels of contrast. I need to keep the nickel chips away from the edge of the knife because unlike 15 and 20 steel, these will not make good knife steel and disrupt any sharpness in the cutting edge. So this time we're also going to use liquid paper to line our canister in addition to some graphite powder. I got liquid paper by itself to work when making the fish hook canister Damascus knife about a year ago and I've only had some rare success since then. So hopefully the addition of the graphite powder will add something to that process and I'll just be able to peel away this canister when it's all forge welded. The spirals are laid out pretty carefully here and I'm even going to add a hollow brass tube in the middle that will be used to add powdered steel while it's slowly withdrawn to see if we can have better luck filling in some of those gaps that we've had troubles with in the past. You can see I'm adding the, the nickel spirals here in sort of one layer in the middle of the tube uh, or canister only right around that tube and hopefully that'll keep them away from the edge where the edge of the knife will be. Also different this time around we're going to compress the spirals in the canister so after we add them we're compressing them with these clamps we'll weld this uh, wall of the canister in place like that and hopefully that'll really squinch those spirals or chips together and put a lot of them in the same plane at the same time where when we forge them and then grind through them we'll have a lot of different spirals visible at the same time. This brass tube seemed like a good idea, but I'm not sure it's working all that well. In fact, I'm not sure it really added much here at all. Uh, the powder seemed hesitant to clear the bottom of the tube, and um, most of the powdered steel ended up being added just directly to the canister without the help of the brass tube. The handle is welded and we're off to forge welding. I marked which side on the handle that I've welded to the canister as far as where the edge needs to be to keep the nickel out of the edge. So that's how I've determined where I need to hit and strike and what dimension I need to flatten this canister in the most. The canister is not feeling very squishy under the hammer. That's a pretty good sign. Perhaps we got a better fill than last time. You 
you can see here when we cut the ends off the canister, there's that gray powder looking stuff. That's actually the graphite and it's stuck to the end of the welded steel. When we grind it off, you can see we have solid steel underneath. You can even see the canister. It's sort of that lighter steel with the middle steel being our compressed powdered steel with the drill shavings in it. I'm going to compress it a little bit more under forge welding heat and really try to close up any gaps that are left in that powder. So I'm going to take off one of the sides and I hope to expose a little crack in there that we can chisel away and peel away the rest of the canister with. This is the moment of truth. Is this thing going to peel or am I going to have to grind it off? Great. Back to the grinder. <laughs> oh well. So here it is. It's been ground clean and etched. I really like how active the first side is, but for some reason the second side really doesn't have a lot going on. It's lacking a lot of spirals. I don't, I'm not really sure how that happened, but it did. You can see sort of the fatter, brighter nickel pieces in there every once in a while. Those spirals didn't seem to hold their shape as well as the 15 and 20. So I'm going to make two different knives. One will be a San Mai around this piece of uh, 1095, and the other I'm just going to cut and make entirely from this piece of uh, forge welded Damascus. We'll start with that one first. Knife number one is made entirely from our billet. You can see I have a bit of a fish mouth forming there on the end where I'm trying to point it. Sometimes you can come back and hammer just behind it and flatten that area out and it'll pull it back and then you can really attack it with an acute angle and get it knocked back into shape. Other times, you know, you just have to grind it out. The idea here is to forge thick and grind down into the metal a bit to reveal more patterns. So we're not going to spend a lot of time hammering in bevels and thinning out our steel. We need room to grind some of it away. As you can see, this first knife will be a hidden tang knife. All right, so here I've normalized the steel twice in the heat oven and I'm removing it from the foil just prior to grinding. And after that, we'll do our quench.
So that's pretty cool. We got a little more activity on that second side. Not a whole lot, but maybe a little something. Oh yeah, can't forget to file on the shoulders before we do the, the quenching and the heat treat. That'd be a uh, quite a situation if we tried to do that while it was hardened. Believe it or not, this thing warped, so I had to straighten it while tempering. I really <laughs> was shocked. I mean, it's so short and fat, I'm, uh, and it was normalized. That, that seems pretty rare, but it happens, I guess, so we got straightened out. Now, I did notice when we did our preliminary etch there that some of the nickel is right at the heel of the of the edge or near the ricasso and it's probably comprising part of the of the edge in fact i'm 90 percent sure it is so this knife is not really going to be all that functional it'll have about half of a good edge and the lower half is just not going to be all that usable so it's a little bit decorative at this point it's, it's more of a concept type knife, I guess, a learning knife. I'm not going to go too crazy with the guard or try anything new or different there. I just really want to get it finished up and move on to the second knife. Our San Mai version. Where we should have a good edge because we're going to use 1095 steel for the entire edge. And sandwich some good steel in there. So I'm excited about that. You can tell how frustrated I am with the result here <laughs> with the nickel interrupting our uh, knife edge because I didn't even bother to tape up the blade while I'm doing this grinding. I was just, I just did, I was like, ah, who cares? I mean, it turned out to be a beautiful knife, don't get me wrong, I, but I'm just frustrated that it's just not functional. I was aiming for something functional this time. So here we are wrapping up knife number one. We'll take a closer look at it in a minute, but let's move on to knife number two. So here's knife number two. I've cut our billet in half and I've welded it to a larger piece of 1095 in the middle. So I'm hoping that the extra steel of that 1095 in the middle will help hold heat during forge welding. The smaller the billet, the quicker it loses heat, and you could really go from forge welding temperatures to non-welding temperatures in just the few seconds it takes to get the billet from the forge to its first hammer blow on the anvil. So we've cut away our extra metal there, and you can see the bottom side of this is forge welded pretty nice. There's a line going up and down most of that top piece. So uh, I'm going to get it as hot as I can, and we'll put some flux on it and try to get it welded back into back in line. Now you notice at that point we had pretty three, three pretty even pieces of steel. They were all in alignment, and they all looked good. They, they were right where they should be right on top of each other, stacked like a sandwich. You've probably guessed uh, we're going to have some issues with that. Let's <laughs> we'll see what happens.
So if we can pull off this sand my construction, our problem of nickel showing up in the edge, which we work so hard to uh, prevent, could be completely solved and that would be really exciting. This could be a pretty cool knife. Let's grind it, dip it, and see where we're at before heat treatment. All right, I'm seeing some issues there. You can see along the spine that part of our billet, our outside billet, is gone and worn down into the darker etching 1095 steel core. And if we look at the edge, we see even some more problems. There's some nickel running about half the width. Uh, and I didn't see three layers, so let's, let's look at this. Remember, the bevel has been hammered. It hasn't been ground yet. We haven't removed any of the layers. We should see three layers there. But if I put a black marker on our 1095, everywhere I see 1095, then we really get a sense that something went pretty dramatically wrong. There's only two layers visible along the edge, or there should be three. So it turns out that uh, this whole thing shifted sort of sideways or catacorner while we were forge welding it and forging the knife even though I didn't recognize that so this is where our edge is there it's only got two layers and uh, parts of our core are exposed where they shouldn't be so that's super frustrating I'm just not sure this is gonna work out after all we're gonna quench it do the finish grinding and just see what we get So you can see that we're okay on this side, sort of. On this side, we've got a bit of an issue. Um, the top half near the tip is going to be okay. But the bottom half, there's nickel well into where the edge is going to be, and I'm not sure that the bottom half is going gonna, is gonna to have core there when we sharpen it. And then you can see some core metal showing up on the spine, which isn't that big a deal. But it's very lopsided. Additionally, even though this side looks pretty good, there's two little delaminations right there and there. You can't see them now that it's been uh, etched, but before etching they were pretty apparent. So was this a complete waste of time or maybe just I learned something? We didn't end up with a functional knife, that's for sure. I was really hoping uh, especially since we, we got a better etch with some more drill shavings and spirals apparent that we'd have a usable blade. Look at the Ricasso right at the plunge line. There's a little tiny spiral there. It's awesome. Um, it just didn't happen, you know, but I learned some things. I have some ideas moving forward. I've already got my next canister Damascus project laid out in my mind. I think we can solve some of these problems. And we'll see. You know, it's always a learning curve, and I'm glad you guys are patient with me and are here for the ride. Have a good one.